You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Now on Later with Mo Kelly, Mark talks about movies and TV, pontificates about pop culture, Ron Report with Mark Ronner. KFI, later with Mo Kelly. The other day, I was minding my own business, bumping around the internet. Got this text message from a friend saying, hey, did you see Mark Rahner? He was in Screen Rant. And I checked out the link. And Mark Rahner, our own Mark Rahner, I know I may tease him. I know I may, may, may make fun of him from time to time. You wouldn't dare. No, I wouldn't. But Mark, over the years, very accomplished writer, and he made the list of the 10 greatest Army of Darkness comics every horror fan should read via Screen Rant. Screen Rant is a big deal. Very reputable. You can, that's the best you can do, Elmer? That's the best cheer you can find? <laughs> Three people in a room that's, all by themselves? No, that's about right, right? <laughs> Uh, I appreciated being on the list. It was completely out of nowhere. That book's been out for a while now. I don't even remember the year it was published. But it's number three all time. All uh, time. Well, listen, Army of Darkness is so much fun to write because you get to write in the voice of Bruce Campbell as Ash. Um, I'm a big Bruce Campbell fan, so I, I, can, I can hear his voice. Um, he and Sam Raimi have done a lot of stuff together. They've done, like, whenever you see a Sam Raimi a Spider-Man movie, Bruce Campbell is in it somewhere. Lurk, he's somewhere in the movie. It's Don't almost like Where's he, Waldo? Yeah, he's terrific and he's funny and he, he's kind of one of these guys who could have been a leading man and you wonder why he wasn't a much, much bigger star than he was, but but we love him. I loved him in Burn Notice. I mean, that was one of my favorite shows and I loved his contribution to that show. I didn't see as much as that of that as I would like to. It's been on my uh, to-do list for years now and I need to just get all the way through it in one step. Here's my plan. I'm going to catch COVID again and then I'm going to just go all the way through burn notice. You, you know that you can watch the TV show and not catch a communicable disease. You don't, it's, they're kind of, they're not required. They're not like a sandwich. You don't need, it's not like peanut butter and jelly. You can just have the peanut butter or jelly. Well, now you tell me. Okay. But tell us a, <laughs> well, you're so strange. Elmer. It still needs a little work, but uh, I, I can see a learning curve. Give us the backstory about Army of Darkness. Well, okay, so this uh, was for a company called Dynamite, and they have a lot of licensed pulp characters. Like, I've, I've written The Avenger for them. The Green Hornet, I think, was my first one for them. And I came to that right out of uh, the Seattle Times. So I wrote a Green Hornet story about... Uh, the uh, the Green Hornet's secret identity is he's a publisher of a newspaper. The Green Hornet goes berserk because he's got to deal with layoffs and downsizing at the paper. And it sounds laughable, but he goes completely ultra violent on some on some criminals to get it out of his system. This Army of Darkness uh, was a Vampirella team up. If, if you don't remember who Vampirella was, she debuted in the late '60s uh, from Warren Publications. Uh, you might remember Creepy and Eerie magazine. Well, Vampirella was the third, and she was a character. And so in my story, Ash from the Army of Darkness film does this incantation from the Necronomicon, which is Klaatu Barada Nikto, which they ripped off from uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Klaatu, yeah. Mm -hmm. Klaatu Barada Nikto. And uh, he gets it wrong again and winds up summoning Vampirella back to that medieval period, but not just as herself. She is a giant vampire that needs to feed. And in the process of their uh, adventure dealing with the Necronomicon, they deal with a whole abbey full of possessed monks. And it's just great fun. Great fun to write. I should tell you, we're talking about this now. I don't get a penny if anybody goes and, and buys it any place. That was my next question. I got paid a fairly low page rate up front. And that's all I was going to get and will ever get from this. But I was really tickled to death to write it and I'm grateful for the assignment it was lots of fun when you've written for different books you've written for the seattle times what other disciplines and places have you written for a video game i just did the dialogue the the hard-boiled noir dialogue for uh, just came out recently called uh, nobody wants to die 
Um, and I can't take credit for anything but the dialogue in that you have to see this game. It's just beautiful. It's like a, a Blade Runner game where you get to be the detective in a twisted, bizarre, sick mystery. That's a lot of fun. Working on a couple comics now that uh, I shouldn't say anything else about because I've had them stolen from me before and seen the advertisement for a TV show made out of one on, on the top half of the Marriott. <laughs> it's it's so funny because I listen to your story and it's kind of like mine. It's like if you would have told me 15 years ago, we'd be doing talk radio. Talk radio specifically, I would have said, oh, hells no. There's no way in the world. Why, why do you say that? Because talk radio for me was something I listened to. I didn't envision myself being in. Remember, I was working in the music industry, other forms of entertainment, was trying to be an actor for a while. I was doing extra work. Uh, I didn't. Even though I grew up listening to talk radio and I loved talk radio, the idea of being a talk radio host was so foreign. If anything, it would have been sports radio, if anything. Life takes you in some strange directions. Last night, I wrote a letter to an old teacher of mine. I saw that one of my favorite teachers had passed, and I looked up uh -huh. uh, the other one uh, who uh, really cut me a lot of slack when everybody else had written me off as just a wise-ass troublemaker. Those assessments were fair. That was, that's that's uh, kind of accurate. You know, those were fair, but this guy uh, showed great kindness and steered me in the right direction with being a wise-ass troublemaker. So I wrote him a, a letter uh, saying, just to give you a little update, I went from newspapers to comic books to now talk radio. All industries known for being lucrative and stable, by the way. I, I have a similar story to you. Um, I would say my most impactful teacher I had uh, was the late Barbara Hawkins taught honors English at South Torrance High School. I thought you were going to say Hawk Tua there for a second. <laughs> no, Barbara Hawkins. And she was a task master, but she loved the English language. Yeah, got plenty of English teachers, but she loved English language. She would say, Morris, you speak with such Elan. And I said, what the hell ah. is Elan? But it, it, she pushed me. She she was one of the people who encouraged me to go ahead and read the dictionary so I could develop my vocabulary. She was the one who really made me come into my own as a writer. And she lived long enough to hear me on the radio. Oh, good on you yeah. and her. Uh, it's important that we thank these people while they're still around. Uh, because teaching, that's a thankless job and it's a hard job. Oh, but I was a big smart ass in class. I mean, I was one like you. I wouldn't say I was disruptive, but I was sub, I was subversive. I, I would undermine the teacher in just about every way. Oh, yeah. Well, the teacher I mentioned who just passed, I put a centerfold on his pull-down map and waited weeks for him to pull it down in front of the whole class. <laughs> uh, the other one who I sent the thank you to saying, listen, I just want you to know you made a big difference in my life, so the long overdue uh, check-in and thank you. That's the guy who instead of letting me disrupt the class, said, here, we're going to have this slideshow, and Mark and I are going to wise off at each of the slides. We're going we're <laughs> to we're trade off with punchlines. So that guy found a, a, a direct direction to channel all this nonsense. You, it's great if you have the chance to show gratitude with these people while they're still around. Yeah, but that's another great point because not all the teachers, most of my teachers tried to stifle me and shut me up. Barbara Hawkins said, okay, let's redirect this energy and creativity into something that'll help you get a decent grade in my class. And you don't know at the time, but she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. You just can't put a price on that kind of kindness, and I appreciate it more and more the older I get. Well, congratulations, Mark Ronner, on your recognition as writing one of the greatest Army of Darkness uh, comic books in the history <laughs> of, of comic book dumb well thank you mo and uh i'll see if i can scare up a copy and bring it in for you yeah well, will you sign it for me i'll make sure there's something on it <laughs> kfi am 640 we're live everywhere in the iheart radio app you're listening to later with mo kelly on demand from kfi am 640 i've never worked in fast food and i admire anyone who can who will or who has if only because it will teach you a valuable lesson about work ethic they're going to work you to death, and you're not going to make a lot of money, or at least not until recently. They've raised the minimum wage to $20 an hour here in California for fast food workers. And I said, it's going to be one of those, it's, it's going to be 
in a pyrrhic victory. What I mean by that is going to be an empty one. It's, you're not going to be able to enjoy it in any real way. Because I said, if you're paying attention, you know that automation is right around the corner if it's not already here. And fast food is the first industry which is going to be fully automated before you know it. You can go to a McDonald's now and notice that a lot of them are kiosk driven where you input your 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 order and then you'll go up to the to counter and there may be one person working the counter and maybe three people in the back making the food. But it's not like where it used to be where you have 10 and 15 people working at a McDonald's and Chipotle. They are rolling out their autocado at two different California locations. They just announced it uh, yesterday. And the avocado is the automated bowl and salad maker and an avocado processing robot. It will be deployed at two locations, and the avocado can take up to 25 pounds of unpeeled avocados at a time, stand them upright, slice them in half, remove the skin and the pit, and they can do it for $0 an hour. And they can do it and not have to worry about the, the machine calling in sick. Not have to pay payroll taxes. Not have to pay any type of health care costs. Not have to worry about them showing up late like Mark Rahner would always do. And those machines will never get mad and give somebody a special. And, and the machines will not try to unionize. The machines will not complain. I'm being serious. This is where all this is headed. The, the Autocado will be deployed at the company's location in Huntington Beach, which is 20972 Magnolia Street, and Chipotle's augmented make line, which uses automated technology to build the bowls and salads. And if you go to Chipotle, you're going to get a bowl or a salad, most likely. I know they can do like quesadillas, but most of the orders are bowls or salads or burritos. So that's like two of the three. And that will be at uh, Corona Del Mar, which is 3050 East Coast Highway. This is what's going to be happening at most fast food joints. Uh, a couple of years ago, we talked about how some hamburger places have a burger flipper. You know, there are going to be fewer and fewer jobs for people, presumably younger people. And you can celebrate the $20 an hour. But there are going to be fewer of those jobs available. So what are the young people supposed to do now? Just sell their organs? Well, there was a time when I was in college. Did you get that um, that advertisement to become a sperm donor? <laughs> I think Not we, being serious. No, I think we were reading different magazines. No, 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 no. When I was in college, it was not uncommon for them to go to college campuses and try to find talent as it were that's my word for it <laughs> yeah recruit people to donate sperm why because you're young you're virile you need money and college students are usually willing to do that kind of stuff because right, you're going to be doing it anyway you might as well you might as well get paid do for it, it into a test tube that's right that's right. i didn't do it but yes i i did Consider it. You're saying there aren't dozens of Mo Kelly clones uh, running around? I am positive that at least when it comes to sperm donation, there are no children with my DNA out there. Well, if you say so. No, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure of that. Okay. And also, I've stayed in touch at least to make sure of a nine-month window of every former girlfriend or one-night stand. <laughs> That's very, gotta be, that's gotta be thorough. clear. Yeah, thorough. Gotta be clear, okay? One night stand, stuff stuff could happen. You may not remember. You, you just gotta keep them around, make sure that they don't just pop out a child in nine months. No, that's uh, a good idea. You don't want any surprises along those lines later on. No, not at all. I don't want to be like at a remote, like say on October 30th, and, and some young adult walks up to me and who's like maybe 30 years old now, or 40 at this point. <laughs> he said, I am your son. <laughs> well, the good part about that is that they're too old to want child support now. No, no, but they can probably sue me or something. Is that how that works? I don't know. Can you? I don't know. But look, I, couldn't they like sue for some sort of like be part of my will or something because they would be a descendant? I don't know. I'll just say right now on the record on the radio, nobody can prove anything about me. Nothing. Well, DNA can go a long way. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no blue dress anywhere that anybody's hiding that has to do with me. Okay, so you haven't had 
sex with Bill Clinton? Is that what you're saying? With anybody, ever. I, uh, I've i never had intercourse with, with anybody. Yeah, that is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Too much trouble. More trouble than it's worth. Well, anyhow, as we get back to Chipotle. Oh, yeah. How did we get there? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we went from Chipotle to sperm donation. <laughs> To celibacy, what? to bastard children. Uh, there's got to be a burrito connection in there. <laughs> oh, there is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Idiot. Never mind. What's the point? <laughs> oh, look at the time. KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere in the iHeartRadio app. Just know the automation is coming. I mean, never mind. It, uh, it's on the way. It's going to arrive sometime soon. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly On Demand from KFI AM 640. Then yes, social media, they're trying to crack down on all this internet porn and adult content which is available. Had Have you noticed that Instagram, it's not pornography, but they're showing more booties and chichis. They're showing a whole lot more on Instagram, trying to be more edgy. And Instagram, in response, is saying, well, we will have a new tier for teenagers to, quote unquote, improve child safety. Yes, Instagram is introducing separate teen accounts for those under the age of 18 because they're trying to wink, wink, make the platform safer for children. Right. Starting today. Anyone under 18 who signs up for Instagram will be placed into a teen account. And those with existing accounts will be migrated over the next 60 days. And the company also said that it is building technology that proactively finds teen accounts. Sounds kind of weird. That pretend to be grownups and automatically place those into restricted teen accounts. The teen accounts will be private by default. Private messages are restricted so teens can only receive them from people they follow or are already connected to. This is going to solve absolutely nothing. One, because we've all been teenagers. And have you ever been to a website? It's not like they actually confirm your age. I mean, it's not like I've ever been to a porn website. This is what a friend told me. No, you wouldn't do that. Okay. But a friend told me when he went to a porn website yeah. to confirm his age. Elmer, it's not funny. <laughs> to, to confirm his age, wink, wink, they asked him what year he was born. And that was it. And on Pornhub, they could go. How is this going to be any different? Well, here's what's really funny. Okay, Meta, also owned by... Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, they're, they're going to protect teens uh, from whatever on uh, Instagram. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg is pushing back uh, over attempts to get him to stop posting dangerous information, disinformation about COVID on Facebook. Well, okay. You have to pick your battles, Mark. I guess so. <laughs> Not everything is equally important. I, if something has a body count, <laughs> right. that, that can wait. Right. Come on now. That goes back to corporate altruism. It does not exist. Sure, sure. It's all about the bottom line. Why it is. make a big deal out of people posting disinformation that could get you killed? And there's a porn connection to this when we talk about TikTok. Um, Elmer, do you have TikTok on your phone? I do have TikTok on my phone. Okay. If I said to you that TikTok was going to be banned in America and you would not be able to find it at the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, do you think that you'd be able to find it? Um, I mean, maybe through the internet, not through the phone, but like use the VPN. I'm wondering if it works with apps. I was actually curious about this too, so maybe. Well, how about this? What type of phone do you have? I have an iPhone. Okay. Do you know how you can download third-party apps on your phone? Uh, I've done it before on an older phone. That's right. Yes, you can. It's not advised because usually that's the wild, wild west and you yeah. don't know what you might end up with. Uh, do you know what the most visited site in the world is? I don't. It's Pornhub. Oh, that makes sense. And you know that Pornhub is not in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store because they don't allow porn 
to be featured there. Oh, so I, it, TikTok is accessible on like a web page? Yes. Then what's the point of banning the app? Yes! That's always been my point. Wow. Also, you can then download the app from the website and also get the updates. My point is people keep talking about this TikTok ban and whether it's going to come in effect in January and it's going to be adjudicated in court when anyone with a modicum of technological knowledge about how to download apps already knows how to get anything they want on their phone, whether it's in the Apple App Store or not. If Pornhub, and if Pornhub has an app, so I've been told, if Pornhub has the number one visited website in the world, and by extension, it's app, and has no need for the Apple App Store, no need for the Google Play Store, what does that say for TikTok, arguably the number one social media platform in the world, if I'm not mistaken? I didn't think about it like that. That's such a genius. So that's why you listen to the <laughs> Later with Mo <laughs> Kelly for insight just like that. I was just curious, can... A effective ban make it so that the U.S. government can somehow prevent phone makers from even allowing the app to be uh, available on web carriers, anything, any IP address. Well, and is it, how far can the government they go? Could, no, they could probably say U.S. hosted websites, and I don't think Pornhub to continue the analogy, is hosted in the U.S. And also, to Elmer's point, you get a VPN. <laughs> it's it's not that oh. difficult. And for those who don't know, VPN masks your IP address. Like, if I wanted to... Oh, look, I can't tell all that on the radio. But there are ways that you can watch content and be anonymous. And it's a VPN. Virtual private network. There, there are too many ways to work. Now, does that... Make it more difficult for people to use TikTok if the ban, air quotes, should go through? Yes. Does it put TikTok slash ByteDance out of business in America? Not at all. Not at all. It's it's a ban that really isn't a ban. It's a ban that would affect American aspects of social media networking, like websites which are hosted in the U.S., the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store. But as far as the end user, not going to impact us at all mm. not not if you want to use tiktok now would it be a little bit more of an inconvenience because you have to go to um a, a place outside n normal channels because it's not recommended that you download apps outside of those app stores because that's when you're more likely to catch a virus or something like that malicious code or you know Something like that. They could really be nasty. They could end up on your phone. But it, but young people, they're used to doing dangerous stuff anyhow. So they would do it anyway. I mean, but the kids on the dark web looking for TikTok? No, you, I, I'm not even talking about on the dark web. But yes, you could get it on dark web. I'm just talking about, look, you don't need to be on. Okay, I hate to keep using Pornhub. <laughs> but you don't need to be on the dark web to get to Pornhub. Uh, it always yeah. comes back to Pornhub, doesn't it? Everything comes back to porn. That's what I thought. Name an industry which is not porn adjacent. Well, we joke about this, rightfully so, but every single new technology is driven by porn. Photography, motion pictures, everything. Computers. VR. Say what say what again, Elmer? VR, virtual reality. Yes, everything. Everything. Remember when VHS and beta tapes came on the scene? It put uh, conventional porn theaters out of business. Oh, absolutely. You should listen to a podcast called The Rialto Report. They go into that at great length, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They go into extensively it great uh, about okay. about how the uh, the video tape revolution changed uh porn. I was confused. I thought you were talking about going into porn. Okay. Okay. That was a little too easy. A little too easy. No, no, no. I'm talking about the joke. Wait, 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 wait. It was low hanging. What? My God. <laughs> what? Oh, hanging? I hit that one right on the head. Oh, okay, all right, okay. All right. <laughs> We're up against the clock here. <laughs> I know George Norrie's like, every single time I come on that man's show to do crosstalk, he does something that I do not approve of. <laughs> Imagine how much he must dread these handoffs. <laughs> Did you say handoff? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> crosstalk. Maybe. But George Norton, when we come back, no guarantee.
You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. KFI AM 640 is Later with Mo Kelly live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Coming up in just moments, we'll be coast to coast AM with George Nori, who's going to give us a little preview right now. How you doing, sir? Good, Mr. Kelly. We've got a great show for everybody tonight. We're going to talk with a psychologist about why everybody seems to be so angry these days. Mm. And later on in the show, military UFO secrets on Coast to Coast. You're doing that just for me, and I love you for it. Thank you so much. I'm also buying you lunch when I come back to L.A. I'm buying you a dinner full of beetles. <laughs> you know, I, I don't eat insects. I don't eat insects. And I've, I've had lunch with you. You know better. You had a group of ants one day and ate them like they were jello. I must not have known. You had to have slipped it to me. Oh, I didn't do it. The other person did. That was Robin, our boss. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, George. <laughs> yeah. And before we get out of here, I just got some information and I'll probably get in trouble for it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mark, you know how I was hinting at how people needed to save October 30th? Oh, yes. Well, coming up on October 30th, well, let me back up. This Friday on the show for Name That Movie Cult Classic, we're going to be giving away a very special gift. Not Just a for, mug that shows nope. uh, you uh, that people can drink out of your head. Better. Much better. Oh, do tell. Not a keychain. Much better. Not a t-shirt. Much better. We're going to be giving away passes. This Friday, giving away passes to our October 30th live show here at the Honda Studios as part of iHeartRadio. Later with Mo Kelly costume party with food and beverage. But you got to be a listener to Later with Mo Kelly. It's just that simple. And I know you didn't get all that the first time. So let me just say it again. And Tawala's going to help me. October 30th at the Honda Studios here at iHeartMedia. We'll have a special live costume party show of Later with Mo Kelly with special guests. Get to see the whole crew, studio audience, food and beverage, October 30th. Pre-Halloween kickoff costume party here at the studio. You and a guest. And we'll be giving away passes starting Friday. And the only place that you'll be able to get them is through the show because we want it to be for our people is as they say. Yeah, this is for individuals who actually listen. You have to be a fan of this show because this Friday's name that cult classic movie is going to be insanely hard. Pulling you across the finish line may Maybe. or I may don't know. not happen. I don't know. Because yeah. this is a serious prize. And oh, um, Yeah. And we're not going to advertise this on the website. No. Not for any amount of time. So don't look for it on the website, KFIM640.com. You're not going to find it. Because it's not for everybody. It's for the family. October 30th. You might want to block out that day. On your calendar, we'll have special guests, obviously members of the KFI family. There'll be food, Halloween decorations, costumes. I assume a costume contest. I mean, it only makes sense. It only makes sense. So there has to be prizes on top of prizes. This is a can't miss event. Uh, you can miss it. You'd be a fool to, but you know, uh, not, yeah, every, yeah. not everyone's going to be able to get in because... You know, it's, 
it's an exclusive party. Only the cool kids get to go. Am I invited? Yes, you're invited. Thank you. You don't get a plus one, though. He has to learn all the Supreme <laughs> Court justices' names. <laughs> Look, I'd, satis- I'd be satisfied with three. Three of the nine. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll come back and I'll know, I'll know all of them. When are you coming back? Probably next week. Okay, I'll hold you to that. I'll put you on air and ask you. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think I was going to ask you off air? <laughs> Anyhow. I'll, I'll be ready. October 30th. The Honda Studios here at iHeart Radio, iHeart Media. Later with Mo Kelly. Exclusive Halloween, pre Halloween bash. Food, frightening, fun, costumes, and maybe you will start giving away passes this Friday. KFI AM 640, we're live everywhere in the iHeartRadio app. The news has been updated. Click to refresh. KFI. And KOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live.